Monday afternoon. I've been down to Puff for a few hours. I have to have a nice little bit of a lie in this morning. Um, day off from work. Came down about 12, 11 o'clock, half 11. And uh, cracked on basically. So let's show you what I've been doing. Start off in the top greenhouse once again. Third time lucky. I've emptied the tank out and I've silk and sealed it off. So this no more leaks. Definitely not at this end anymore. So I'm not going to spend much time on that because you already know what's going on with that. Sorted the fire out, put some more sealer on the top where the, the gaps were, and that's that and taking away nicely as well. I've ended up chopping some more wood up and stuff as well. So the tunnel, as you've seen last week on the Sunday, I managed to get this beam on and the middle beam on. I've now managed to get all of the rest of the beams on as well. So the beams on across the top of there and also down there. And it's now a lot more solid. So the problem I had with the skin was when I pulled the skin, this section would push right in. And it would push right in, but not gonna have that problem anymore. Now I am aware, of course, the sun comes across the tops and there may be some shadows set on the leaks, but it's a chance I'm gonna have to take because I want the structure to be solid. So that is not going, any, not going anywhere now. So that's the tunnel structure sorted out. Now, I mean, when a grandad came before there, he's mentioned there was something down the bottom which will come in handy. And there was a large piece of this corrugated roofing sheeting. So it was it basically filled the entire bed, all the way down there like that. So when I've measured it, and I've measured my shed roof over there, cut this in half perfectly, two of these fits the roof. So. I've got my new roof sorted out. Yes, there's some holes and things which need to be solved out, but I'm going to put that to good use. So we've managed to cut it in half with some uh, tin cutters. And that has been sorted. That's a task for another time. So that's been that sorted as well. Nothing else happening in the garden today. I have had a chap down called George, who was very kind enough to drop this header tank off. Now this one's going to keep as a potential spare. Um, and see what happens just in case this one doesn't succeed the one that's in here um, but he's also given us some fittings and things as well which is very very handy very very handy so thanks very much for that George many thanks for that and um, will come in handy um, whether have and not need and need and not have but yes the shed in itself I need to get that sorted out but I'll be over the moon once I get it sorted because I'll be able to get in here, have me fire, and when I get some carpet, I'm gonna put some line those site, line these walls with carpet, sort this roof out. So I'm gonna sort the um, sort the frame out across the top, put some new joists and things in, and then I'm going to get the two sheets across there and across there. Close these gaps in the windows because so for some reason the whole structure is leaning this way, but we'll see what's what. Then I'll be able to get in here on my couch. With the fire on, lovely and toasty. So that's the plans for them in any ways. So at the minute, all I'm doing, sorting the fire out and going home. I'll be back over tomorrow morning to sort all that tasks out. I might even make a start in that shed tomorrow morning. Uh, been out at the lobbing shop, they've got the potatoes in. So I'll be going down on Wednesday morning to go and uh, collect the potatoes. And from me today, that is all I've done. That's all I'm getting done. I'm gonna go home now, spend some time with the kids and the family and see how things are progressing at home. I'll see you to I'll see you tomorrow and I'll see I'll see you on Wednesday. Tuesday morning down at the allotment. Uh, one of the T5 lights at home uh, has gone off. So last night I made the quick judgment decision to pop the the new lamp that I got uh, I won just after Christmas just before Christmas up onto the greenhouse. Um now there's still lots of things to do with it but for the time being it's going on I'm monitoring how much it costs um, but it's it's heating up the entire greenhouse, next door's garden, and my garden as well. <laughs> so I need to sort the light distribution out as well. But I'll take you home and I'll show you that if I get a chance this morning. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, I'm just seem to be fixing things at all all the time at the minute. I'll kind of wait until it's all just sorted and done, and all I need to do is just keep on top of things. But that's the reason why I'm doing it now, while I'm young, so that later on. All I need to do is come down, yeah, do what I need to do, and also at home as well. So I'll catch his back up home and I'll show you the uh, the sun grow room. <laughs> it's a, Leslie opened the windows this morning and she thought the greenhouse was on fire. <laughs>
But I'll show you that when I go up home. Um, I'm sorry if it does fuck that, but uh, I've got the, the light on there and it's covering the entire entire room at the bottom there. So I just need to see and wait and see how much it's going to cost an electric. But at the time, I mean, that, that, that's generating a lot of, well, it's generating some heat, which I'm putting onto the top of the plants. Um, I need to fix them T5s and get them sorted out because I'm not too keen on having that because it's letting off a lot, a lot of light. Um, I think, I've, like I say, I like, I like to stick to what I know and uh, the T5 did the job last year and I am looking at getting some better ones um, with more bulbs on, but uh, that's going to have to do for the time being. But that's what I've had to do with that. I've had to take the entire top off in here um, and just see how things progress uh, until I get them ones fixed through there. Well, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, what is it today? It is now Wednesday morning. Um, fire's on down here. I'm down here most of the day. I'm potentially going to start sorting the shed roof out, but in the meantime, I'm sorting out my giant marrow bed. Out. Uh, I've asked, I have asked Gary Cooper, George Giant Veg, for some advice because of how big of an area I should be sorting out. So I managed to get. Um, I'm busy sorting out three three of the standard beds down here that should give me enough room for the giant marrows with plenty of garden space this year as well as you can see the beads of sweat on my forehead i've been working hard but i want to put you up and i'll show you what i've basically been doing Bed. It's three beds turned into one big bed. Um, like I say, it's just sorted the sides out just so I can muck it up when I get me muck. It's already been dug over. I just need to dig the two sections out where the paths have been, which I'll do now. And then that is that all finished and done, ready for the manure to go on. So that, that should be a big enough area for that. And I've still got the other bed to play with as well. So another job done. I need to go clean my flue out now again because it's been bunged up and I want to see if I'm making a start on the shed roof. I just got cracked on and got jobs done. Let's show you what me and my grand have achieved because grand come and gives a hand as well. So, new roof is on. I'll take you on the inside because you can't really see much. Just bent these tin sheets over the side here. I made a bit of a mistake when it come to the measurements. I measured it wrong. <laughs> But it's worked out quite well actually because I still had one of the clear sheeting that I had from the, the whole one. This was all like that, all clear sheeted. And for how short I was, once I cut this one section in half, I've managed to get a bit of clear in there. And that's all screwed in nice and tight. So that isn't going, it's not going anywhere. So the only thing I've got is the gaps at the top, which can be easily filled in, but that roof is not going anywhere. Whoop, whoop. And once I've got that job done, I decided to get this job done. So top of the fire, managed to get this section, which I've managed to get a piece of pipe, piece of metal, put it in the middle for the chimney to rest on. And that means the chimney's not falling down the hole as well. And I've sealed it around the edge. And that I just need to do that top section to sort that out. But I'll do that in that time. Um, so at the minute, what I've done, just to get this stuff heated up and sorted out. I've got the fire on in here. So I'm just waiting for that fire to get away. Then uh, it'll be nice and warm in here. The only other thing which I need to get sorted out in here, just before I start making it nice and cosy, is I need to sort out this this section here. Because, for some reason, water's getting in here, and I don't know where it's coming from. I was originally coming from the outside and running underneath the, the roofing section, but I managed to sort that out. But I don't know where that's coming from now, and I need to make a start with it as soon as possible. Because this bar is already starting to rot away, which is not good. 
because it's holding the whole roof section up. Once it goes to there, this section here will just drop down. It was when I initially lift, was going to make this into a shed. As you can see when I turn around, there's the top of the section there. I'm about a little bit, but that bit there was the difference from me banging my head and not banging my head. So that's the reason why I put that in and lifted that whole section up. So just lifting that whole section up there, I think I've created a pool up here somewhere, which the, there must be a hole somewhere where it's coming through and it's going down and it's keeping it wet, which that's actually frozen there. So after you get that sorted out, but I'm pleased with what we've managed to get done in the shed itself. I need to clean this couch up because uh, with the damp and everything, there's some, uh, some mildew or something on the top of it. Just wipes off, just a quick wipe off. I don't know what that is, but it'll wipe off. Once I give it a good clean, I'll be able to sit in here with the fire on, nice and warm. That's what I've been up to, so we're getting this shed sorted out. And we're also getting the marrow bed done. So that's, that's that done. I'm just going to dig dig that section here, I said I was going to do before. So I'm going to get it done now. I'm just having going to have five minutes now before I'm going to tidy up the in front of the shed over there in front of the top greenhouse because I'm going to get that area set ready for um, and I'll show you the buckets that I'm going to use for my show carrots that I'm going to attempt to grow this year we'll see how that comes once again so my first year for a lot of growing this year um, a lot of growing some certain vegetables and things so my bed's ready the, bu bu the, the buckets will be ready once I get some sand next week um, I've got a list of things to do for next week but at the minute, I'm sitting down, I'm going to pop my feet up, and I'm going to sit in here, fire's on. It's not going to be kept on very long, I'm just going to have it on just to warm this room up, just to see what difference it makes. Um, and that's me, pretty much done for the day once I've tidied that up. So, I'll, uh, I'll time lapse the tidy up. Right, that's that done. Now I know what these ones off these bits are for, they're for the onion house, so I'll move them in due course. Um the course this door goes up against this greenhouse door as well in the night time. Um I've got enough space for another two of these tanks. And all I'm gonna do with these tanks is I'm gonna fill them with sharp sand and um, then core them out. Core lots of holes out, then fill them holes with soil, it's proper carrot mix. Um, carrot compost mix and grow me stump carrots in here. The stump carrots I'll be growing this year are sweet candle. So I've got enough space for another two of those. So I might get another two of those and put them down here, find something that's in the garden. So that's me done for the day. So let's just have a quick show of what I've done, as well, you've already seen, anyways. But um, little things I've dug down the middle section down, put a couple of boards across the back there. So when I fill this area with manure, there. Uh, it's basically like a raised bed. <laughs> it's a foot high, Dave. Dave, it's a raised bed. It's a huge raised bed. <laughs> I've pulled these leeks up. These are my granddad's leeks from my granddad's seed. You can see they're all different shapes and sizes. That's the reason why when you grow from seed, you never know what you want to get. So that's why a lot of people grow from grass with the exhibition stuff. So there we go. Plenty there to make a soup. Sorted. So that's them done, I'll be taking them home. I've taken some potatoes as well, which I stored. They're in the car. So that, the other thing I'm getting sorted out, of course, is the new roof on the shed. So a little bit more work can be done. I'll fix this door handle as well. Fire's on in here, it's lovely and warm in here now. Just got that little section at the top to sort out. That roof yeah, should do the job fine. Got my little chair there, cleaned it up, shift this stuff out of the way, bang, just got to tidy up everything else in here. I've got somewhere to sit in here now as well. Fantastic! Thinking that I was only going to get one thing done today, and I've managed to get the marrow bed done, the shed roof done, the shed fire sorted, and outside the greenhouse tidied up. So I say that is success. 
my back sore now from all the bending over and doing the digging and stuff as well but uh, i'm gonna have a sit down by the fire just chill might shell a few peas but that's me done for the day i'll go back home and see what damage is being done down at home so today is wednesday uh, i've got the next couple of mornings to take her on and then i've got the weekend off so i look forward to the weekend and see what we get up to i am meant to be going to pick some alpaca dung up uh, at the weekend but we'll see if that comes to fruition and i'm also going to go down to the allotment hunt and start getting my potatoes in as well so i'll see you through the week hi again it's now thursday morning it's absolutely freezing outside it's minus 10 in parts of the country last night so i hope you fleeced everything up um i'm down the garden sorting the fire out again in the morning um and what i'm going to do is the cumbrians here I'm going to start nicking a couple because they're starting to get a little bit too tall for my liking so I'm going to nick the nick the leeks and I'm going to show you how I do that as well. Nicking leeks. So like I said this is only my second year growing leeks but what I got that from the first year growing um, a lot of pot leeks of course need to be under six inches from the button and the button is just this little bit here this little crease here. So this bit here needs to be six inches when it gets uh, time to pull out uh, of the trench neck in between whenever you decide to pull them out july september whenever but it can be no bigger than six inches now sometimes these go a bit too high like in the case of this one here as you can see it's a very high button at the moment so what i want to do is i'm just going to nick this back down so that the the button will be short because the short the button's short when it gets this later on in the season when it's growing out the button will be you can remove a few flags and get your six inches so what how i do this is uh, there's a few ways of doing it but uh, the easiest way to do it i've already done this one here as you can see that's the reason why it's looking a bit uh bleh i've just brought them through you can see the difference between these two so all i do i've just snipped the bottom one because to be honest these flags are no good anymore um they're starting to die back so just a little snip down the middle Pull the two apart and bring it down and just remove the bottoms. So right down to the base and just pull it, pull it off. And you can see there, it's revealed another button. So I still don't want this that big neither. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to snip that leaf there, across there, down the middle. jobs are good everybody does theirs differently you can also use a blade or a safety pin you've got to be very careful though because if you do it this way there's a chance you're going to go right the way through so you've got to be very very careful so from the top just very gently run it down you can use your thumbnail if, if you wish and you can pull it all the way down to the bottom then just gently pull back and that's that done as well you can see there's another one there as well so we need to get on the other side now done a bit awkward there i just want the one one side done no seconds i'll bring this round here see because they get in the way these flags are no good and you can see there's one there very well so this is still too high for my legging so if you want to use a thumbnail thumbnail down to the bottom pull it out pull it out pull it out pull it out and that there we have nicked the button so it's right down the bottom so when the fresh shoots come out the middle the button will start a bit lower than that but they're nice and clean them flags as opposed to these ones which are the older ones which you can see is a touch of virus in them but these will clean up and they'll be locked they'll be fine going forward so i've got another four to do here so i'm going to get on with these but that's how 
to nick buttons on the leaks. And you know what the button is, the button, I mean these ones here, the Betty Black leaks, it's already nicked its own button there. When it gets so big it just pops and there's the next one, so these will just be getting left. So I'm going to get on with the rest of these ones, then sort the fire out and that's me done for the day. And that's them all nicked. So as you can see, they're all still sitting alright, it's just that if we look at the Betty Black leaks, you can see the steps that they've got up there, so we'll keep on going up there, that'll just keep nicking its own button though. And here, as you can see, there's no steps. So what will happen is the fresh leaves will come up the top and they'll just start creating their own button and it'll get bigger and bigger at the top. And I'll leave these, these will recover over the next four weeks, uh, four to six weeks. They'll be staying in these pots as well. The two litre pots, I don't have any one litre pots, but they're doing all right. Um, so I am pleased with the way they're coming on. I'm pleased with the way them ones are coming on as well. And the intermediates, I need to get some, uh, I need to get some sleeves to put around so I can draw them up a bit more. But other than that, they're doing all right. And also the alleys are doing all right in the paint pots. These uh, Betty Black Lakes I got off Chris Lang. The roots are starting to come out of the bottom of this pot here. So they're coming on all right as well. Same with all the other ones as well. And these ones are just flying. Flying these ones. Difference in them. So, pleased with the way things are turning out. Fire's on. That's me all done for the day. Um, I've got work today, next couple of days, and I'm back at the weekend, so I shall see you back at the weekend. Stay warm, stay wrapped up, see you at the weekend. I've just been at the middle greenhouse to check on the chrysanthemums and see how they're doing. And uh, as we can see here, we'll have some nice cuttings on the bottom. So these are the ones I potted up a few weeks ago into the used compost. As you can see, we've still got lots and lots of nice, fresh little cuttings coming through there as well. But these bigger ones are now ready to be taken. So, show you once again how I take the cuttings, which I was successful with last year. Now, these two, I'm only doing two varieties at the moment, and that's the yellow coat here. Now, these are a nice ball chrysanthemum. Um, I've got two plants this year, um, which I can manage to keep. But I managed to keep these two going, but I also managed to get a few cuttings, which I did a few late cuttings, and I've got some smaller ones to try um, and just see if we can get some more cuttings off basically try and get plenty more because I want to do a full bed of these because they are pretty I've got red ones, I've got yellow ones, I've got white ones all different ones but this is how I take the cuttings so make sure that the cuttings are good a couple of inches in length and they're large I'm not going to be using any rooting hormone or anything like that it's just pure compost Humax compost bit of vermiculite, a bit of perlite then um, I've got my little seed tray here which you can see Handy little compressor which I made with a bit of wood and a bit of wood. I'll just point this down over. Just what I'm doing is just compressing that down so it's nice and firm. There we go. Right, next thing you need to do get a sharp blade, which I'll be using this Stanley blade, Stanley knife. Okay. Bring things a bit closer for you so you can see. And what you do is nice clean cut with a new blade, right, not right on the base itself, but just above, just below a uh, leaf nodule at an angle. So as you can see there, we we'll have one nice cutting. Now what we want to do from here is you just want to be stripping the leaves back until you're only left with about three. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that the plant produces roots, not leaves. Because we don't need any leaves at the moment. So I've got a couple on the top there. All I'm Make sure as well that when you cut, you cut just below the leaf mode nodule there. Okay, and from there, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Get the compost, you can dip these in a bit of root and hormone, but mine's at, the, mine's at home. Into the compost, just push around the side. And there we'll have first cutting taken of 2019. 
So I'm just going to do the rest of these ones. I've got about nine all together. I put them in here, I label them up, and then when the other ones are ready, I'll start doing the other ones as I go along as well. These little milk carton markers that I make. Um, they see that this was for the Achillea last year. Reuse, reuse, reuse. These are plastic, they won't go away. You can use a bit of where white spirit or a bit of turpentine, anything like that. But just a quick scrape over the top, and it cleans off lovely. So reuse, reuse, reuse. So I'm going to mark these up, and that's that done. Them done. The first eight cuttings in February. Now what I'm going to do. So I'm going to mark, the, I've already marked them up, the yellow coat here with the date that I took these eight from. What I'll also do is that I'll give these a quick little, little bit of water. And these will be left in here in the warm heated greenhouse. Realistically they need bottom heat. So what I will be doing is I'll be placing these onto the heat tray on the bottom there, just in the middle where it's nice and warm. Because what they need is they need heat at the minute, not so much the light. But they will get light down the bottom as well. So let's take these down here and put these on here. On the bottom there. They will sit right there, on there. And they'll be lovely and warm on there, on the heat bench. Pipes warm. Bottom of that pipe's hot as well. Fan dabby dozy. So, first lot of cuttings taken this year. See so he's back at home. Saturday morning, down in the garden. I've been to the Lotman hut. And look at these two helping us out. I wasn't, I haven't even asked them. Right here, yeah, put it down here. Yeah. Just put it down here. Yeah. Is now, there two in the car? Come on. There's now three in the bag. Take your time. We'll get this sorted out. So, yeah, I've just been down and getting loads of goodies. I'll show you them goodies in a second once I get them all out of the car. Another task is the sweet peas. I was reminded this week to have a check of these by somebody online. Thanks very much for that reminder. Um, what I've done is I've gotten my secateurs. I've gotten across the top. And when they're over three inches tall, just nip the tops off. And what that does is it promotes the plant to basically produce more shoots. Just like this one does here, I did one earlier. So this one here, as you can see, we've got one there that's all the way up, just one pea shoot. And this one here is two. So this one here will now develop another two. So that would mean more, more, more shoots, more flowers. Fantastic. So I'm just gonna do this one, and that one, and that one, and then that's all done there as well so that's another task right I'll take these in the greenhouse and i'll show you what i've been getting so i'm getting four kilograms of desiree potatoes seed potatoes i'm getting four kilograms of maris piper and i'm getting four kilograms of what's potash. these ones oh that's potash two uh, potash no, potash is all right the strawberries no and what's them ones uh the pentland crown so i'm getting four here there's 12 kilograms of teddies there that should be well enough for me and see if, if there's any spares I can get my granite. And I've got some I've got two kilograms of potash there. So the potash is going to be the mixed with some water to feed the strawberry hanging basket down the bottom greenhouse. Bucket to put that in. Yep, I'll sort all out granite. Um and I've gotten some sticky fly traps which I'll be putting up in the back here. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is, you don't need the full one, mate, half them. No, I wait, I've got a full one, I see, I've got, I've got a full one up there. Yeah, but you don't need a full one, you should no. half them. I well, I'll take your advice and I'll do that, Grandma. Because look. Because you can bang your heat on it. Oh, they're an nightmare in the stick. But, I've, um, done, I've done that for years, a half them, mate. Well, I'll do that, then you get double amount. You um, it. You so, I'm going to go outside and I'll show you the compost that I've got. So, I'll show you the compost that I've picked up. I've picked up two bags of the multi-purpose. Hopefully this is a lot better than what it was last year. Time will tell. I've picked up some professional compost range, pot bedding. Um, 
and I've also picked up me standard three bags of Humax. So I'm going to do a bit of experimenting, mixing things around. I'm going to do a bit on here, a bit on there, and a mixture between that and that. We'll see what's what, and then I'll do it with all my leaks when the ellies and things are ready to be fottled up. But that's what I've picked up there as well. So with the potatoes, like I say, I'm well early with them. I don't need them as of yet, but what I will be doing, I'll show you. So what do with the potatoes? Just a quick sneak peek, you can do. You chip them. Get some egg tray cartons, or anything that you can stand them in. Uh, egg, normal egg trays will do. Put them in there, and the tops will develop what's called eyes. From there, leave them in, and you can pop them in the ground straight away. You can remove the eyes, etc., etc. But don't bother, but that's another video for another time. I'll do a tray full just to show you. Um, alternatively, put them straight in the ground, which is exactly what I'll be doing with the majority of them. So that's what I've gotten from them. The other traps, some more Dynamec, which I'll be taking home. It's expensive stuff. I mean, the Dynamec itself, for 10 millimeters, 10 mil, five pound 10, and you do five mil to 10 liters for thrip, and two and a half mil to 10 liters for spider mate. On red spider, I think it is. Um, and that will go into a spray bottle. And the spray bottle there. So if you think 10 mil, um, five or ten, so it's 20 liters altogether. That gets mixed with 20 liters of water. So that's 20 of these. It does a long time. But we'll be putting the fire on. That will be nothing else we're getting done today. Um, we'll be going home and uh, spending time with the family and that. So I'll see you tomorrow last thing i need to show you before i shut off actually is the flowers that i put in on the late night the other night it was the carnations well i've just lifted the top off and then turn around and show you so the carnations i put in on the 20th which was just a couple of days ago and from what i can see if i lift this up i don't know if it's a compass or what but i've got some sprouting up already now these are supposed to take 7 to 14 days now it has been seven days, I am, I do know that, but they're starting to get a bit of movement on, which is great already to see. These things in here, they're not, uh, that's not a, that's a weed, so is that. But, please see there, they're coming, they're coming up already as well. Just put the propagation there back on. But yep, that's us done for me and his derriere. See you tomorrow. Well, me and a friend, Rob, who's got a garden few doors down from me, we're coming to pick some gold up. <laughs> <laughs> some alpaca gold. Let's show you, this is going to be lots and lots of fun. So, we've managed to get a good source of alpaca dung, manure, for free. Love free. The only issue is, me and Rob have got to get that pile, as much as it is possible, in the car, which is through there, up there, and up past the house. Are you looking forward to this, Rob? No. Good on you then, Ma. <laughs> Let's get started before it gets any darker. So the journey down to it, and to get back up it as well. Now I'm just going to slide down this hill. <laughs> Whoa! As you can see, oh, hey. it's a kind boat there, on the turn. Through the woods. Oh, we're out of breath already, but we've only done one bag. <laughs> All the way through the uh, so that's one bag down. Probably only getting another two bags in the car while I come back. <laughs> We've hardly even made a dent, <laughs> We've made a little dent in there. Well, I don't think you can see very much there, but uh, it's dark now. We've managed to do a canny size of it. I'll have to come back and get some more, right? Well, we've got an absolute car full of uh, manure. Time to go and empty this bad boy. It's literally full to the brim. My feet are freezing. It's pitch black dark. It's going to be dark by the time we empty this out. We'll have to work out where we're going to empty it. Where we're going to put it. I'm just going to hide all yours. I'll put because I've got a space at mine. I'll have to open big gate doors now. Oh, we'll sort this out the way we'll have a little think. Alright, we'll have a think. It's dark now. See you when we get the, the manure down. I'll see if I'll show you tomorrow. It'll be a bit better, but uh, it goes from there. Once you get on the garden. Tiny size pile like, but I'll show you he's better than Warren anyways. It's time to go home now, go get warm because I'm bitter. <laughs> so fire's away. It's 
smoke's coming out. Sorted out, done. That's that warmed up. Rob's cool as well, aren't you, Rob? Certainly am. <laughs> ready, for, ready for home time. It's time to go home now. <laughs> time to go. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Very quickly, Sunday. Last night was a lot of fun. <laughs> I ended up on my face a couple of times running up that hill. Um, I've come down the garden, I'll just show you the pile that I've managed to get brought down. we have still got to go get back up and get some more, but I'll not be doing that this week. Um, I'll also show you what I managed to pick up, something else for the leaks as well. But I'll turn you around and show you the pile of... Uh, I'll pack a gold that I'll get. Well, there's Elizabeth coming to see her. <laughs> She's coming down. So... I didn't manage to get down to the allotment today. Um, well, I tell a lie, I did get down to the allotment, but my phone died, so I couldn't take any footage. Um, I've just come back home just to finish this week's vid off. I've, uh, I'll show you what I've done behind me, and I'll give you a quick show around the grow room inside as well. So what I've done here is I've sown just a couple of Thunder Mountain chilies, long chilies. I've sown some early giant Swede, just to give them a, a little bit of a head start. I've sowed a couple of Lee Herritons tomorrows. So I've sort of started them off. And I've also started to put some more Joe's Long Chili in as well of my own. Now I've had a look in here and I've just moved the disturbed the compost to see what the seeds were like. And the seeds are starting to root. So that's a good sign for them ones. I haven't looked in these ones yet neither, but these were done a little bit later. The Cornish Giants, which I've left in the propagator here. They're all coming on all right. I've got uh, 10 in there at the minute. I need to give them trumpets uh, a drink, but they're, they're doing all right. I mean, the cold's getting them a little bit, but it's still warm enough in here for them. At the minute, it's sitting just above 11 degrees. I think it's on there, they just need a drink. Uh, moving on into the grow room. Well, I'm sorry, but my phone died. <laughs> I need to get this video edited. So I will show you the greenhouse in the back garden next week. I'll uh, show you everything else that's going on as well. Um, but lots of things done this week. Trying to keep things nice and short. I'll see you all next week. Thanks everybody for watching. And uh, keep yourself nice and tucked up, wrapped warm. <laughs> see you later.